The Ice Queen by Alice Hoffman is the kind of book you just sink into. You savor it and just swim around in it. Part of why you just fall into this book and let it envelop you wholly is the colors, the temperatures, color and the deep sensations that can go with. Hmm. From the colors and experiences there, I have created this native flower garden design, paying homage to the Ice Queen, if you will. Getting down to practical business first, this garden plan is for a garden area with full sun or partial sun, soil that's medium wet mostly, although there is some room to play around there. It's also planned to be tall in the back, about four to six feet, and shorter in the front, coming in at less than a foot tall. So I've considered and wrapped up into this garden concept native flowers that speak to the cold, white, winter snow and ice, sharp, white, snowy, ploppy, white, (laughs) gentle falling white snow, such a main and continued theme throughout, slashed through as a slightly lesser theme are native flowers bringing red, a red dress, red oranges, blood, red, some black as well, a rotting black core, trees dying at their core um, that perhaps appears unexpectedly. So those are the main ideas here in paying tribute to the Ice Queen in this garden. I've also included an optional side to the garden, which you could put in or leave out depending on your tastes. This side isn't quite fitting with the massive white slashing red and spot of black. It's a couple flowers that are monarch butterfly lures, monarchs playing a role later in the book. So here's the basic concept for the garden. Uh, The green here is maybe your lawn, a driveway, or a walkway. And the white here is your native flower garden bed. And if yours isn't this shape, no problem. You're smart and you're creative. You can make it work with a little finagling. And the white is what most of your native flower garden will look like in keeping with the snow white of the book. And there is a red slash that comes across the white. And then there's a little black. And then on the side is that optional monarch butterfly orange theme that doesn't really come up until much later in the book. And again, that is optional. In keeping with whites, then later in the book you get red coming in, followed by black, and that final optional orange monarch butterfly part. This garden plan has white flowers coming up in April and then continuing white blooms until fall time. Red flowers come up around June, then they go till fall time with the orange and the black flowers coming up in the late summer and into the fall. So the order of the flower colors blooming is in keeping with the order of colors that are laid upon you in the book. Okay, so back to our garden plan. But this time, let's get specific. Here we go. Side note, hey native flower power, you're a really great artist, said no one ever. Also, these flower names are all going to be in the video description along with their number and letter identifier that you can see on this plan. So let's start with the white native flowers that between all of them will bloom from spring until fall. And you can see it's mostly white here. And then there's um, two red flowers that we'll have in there and then the black. And so starting at the top left, I have this great burr reed. Sparganium uricarpum, which I have labeled as 1A. Uh, This will get up to four feet tall, blooms from June to August, and it likes wet soil. And so if your soil Um, is not particularly wet, 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 I do have an alternate option of a white false indigo, Baptisia alba, which is just as tall and blooms at the same time. It just is a little less uh, wet of soil. And so the uh, great burr reed was chosen not just because it's white, but also because of those bloom shapes. The fluffy white blooms on that burr reed remind me of fluffy white snow floating down.
All right, next we have 1B. This is wild quinine, Parthenium integrifolium. And so this is likewise about four feet tall. It blooms in June until September. And those little white flowers remind me of little swirling tiny snowflakes. And so that'll be in the back along with that great buried. Next up is 1C, which is white trillium, uh, trillium grandiflorum. And you can see it appearing twice here. It goes right through the middle. So um, this white trillium is about a foot tall, and it blooms from April until June. And on each little stalk, it's a very uh, singular and large flower, <clears throat> which in... Uh, in line with this book, it reminds me a little bit of a giant uh, kind of snow white ice piece, right? Down at the bottom there, we have 1D, and that is going all the way across, and that is wood anemone, anemone kinkafolia. And this will only get to six or eight inches tall, so not particularly tall. And this blooms from April until June. <clears throat> and so um, if you hadn't noticed, uh, the flowers in the front, these wood anemones, uh, will bloom first. And then um, the blooms, the white blooming, will move back through your garden bed with the great burr reed and that wild quinine coming up last for the whites anyways and so in between um, these red slashes I have I have two other additional white flowers to continue that prevalent theme and not let it go so one E that top one is smooth penstemon or penstemon digitalis that's two to three feet tall blooms around June or July and I absolutely love those white flowers <laughs> and next is one F there stuck in there and that's Western Indian psychic Porteranthus stipulatus, and that's about two feet tall, blooms from May to June. This Western Indian psychic is nice because it's this little white flower in keeping with our white theme, but it has this red on it that nods to that red slash that's all around it in our garden concept here. So it's a good spot for it. And so let us move on to that red slash. So I have two red flowers here uh, for that slash, and at the top is 2A. Pardon the beeping in the background. Uh, and 2A is cardinal flower, Lobelia cardinalis. This blooms July through September and is maybe three or four feet tall, depending on how happy it is. And this red flower, it's a bright red, it's beautiful, and it brings in hummingbirds, which is lovely. Now, the hummingbirds are not part of the book, but um, uh, it is really nice to see, though, anyways. And our other flower tucked in there for our red is 2B, that's marsh cinquefoil, potent. Potentilla palustris. The red is really nice, but it is also like a darker red, and there's almost some black to it, uh, which seemed very fitting for our theme here. So this flower is two feet tall, blooms around June or July. So cardinal flower, white penstemon, March cinquefoil red, western psychic white again, and then down to our black uh, flower. So this is the final little color slash. 3A is bottled gentian or gentiana andrusii. Now there aren't exactly any black native flowers. However, bottled gentian certainly leans very dark and black-like uh, depending on where it is in its bloom. It also will appear purple or dark purple. So for our ice queen theme, I like that also it's not a traditional open showy flower, but the bottle gentian is more of a closed up dark flower uh, that can definitely lean black. And so that is the basic concept for this flower garden. And uh, there's the optional side part for the garden, uh, which we are going to move to here, our uh, side part. And this speaks to later in the book when monarch butterflies and orange suddenly appears. So down at the bottom there, I have our only real orange native plant, which is called butterfly weed, Asclepius tuberosa. So that's 4C. And to be honest, I know they call it butterfly weed, but I noticed more bees hanging around than butterflies. 
Um, it is a beautiful orange, though, indeed. And that really hits the mark here on um, our orange need in our scheme here. And coming up this side, I've also put in a metal blazing star, Liatris ligula stylus. And up in that top right corner, I have swamp milkweed Asclepius incarnata. So these plants are actually uh, purple for the metal blazing star and pink for that swamp milkweed. Uh, so not at all in keeping with our garden design. But those two plants are the absolute best monarch butterfly lures that I have ever seen. Especially, especially, especially that meadow blazing star. Holy moly. It pulls in monarch butterflies like you would not believe. And I know you're living somewhere and you're thinking, well, I ain't ever seen no monarchs around here. Well, ha ha. Put in some meadow blazing star and just wait. So that's uh, 4A and 4 uh, 4A. 4B is that swamp milkweed. Um, it's really an unfortunate name for such a beautiful um, flower. Monarchs lay their eggs on swamp milkweed. And so you'll really not only be drawing in the grown-up monarch butterflies, but you'll also be supporting their little babies too, their little baby caterpillars. So that side there um, is optional. The monarch luring flowers aren't quite in keeping with our ice queen garden design. Uh, as far as colors go, but then again, uh, the end of the book breaks from the design in and of itself, right? Um, and so now that I've introduced all these native flowers, uh, here is that timeline graph um, in more detail, and you can see the different colors. The ones are all white, the twos are red, that three is our black flower, and the fours are the orange monarch optional part. And if you tease it apart a little bit, you'll notice the white flowers in the front blooming first, working back through the flower bed. The ones in the back will bloom later. And like I had said, that slash of red flowers will bloom a little later, as in the book. The black and orange monarch idea comes in a little bit later as well. So here again is our native flower concept for The Ice Queen by Alice Hoffman. Mostly white flowers in keeping with the snow white and ice of the book. Some red for a red dress, red oranges, a bit of black for rotting cores and trees dying, and then that monarch butterfly orange on the side. And just now, thinking a little bit more about it, you should really put in that side monarch butterfly orange part, that metal blazing star. Uh, and that swamp milkweed, ooh, they bring in those monarch butterflies. And when you see it, oh my gosh, it'll blow your cupcakes off. And the end of the book, I mean, there's a big monarch butterfly part. So it's not weird at all uh, to pay tribute to the Ice Queen by having those monarch butterflies in there. So if you're planning on paying tribute to the Ice Queen and planting this garden... Be sure to use the scientific names when you look up these flowers or seeds to buy as the common names can be used differently by different companies and different people, especially that meadow blazing star. There's a bunch of different kinds of blazing star, dense blazing star, rough blazing star, prairie blazing star, meadow blazing star, and the common names really get all mishmashed and misused out there. So use the scientific name for the meadow blazing star. This would be Liatris ligulostylus. Um, so that you can absolutely be sure uh, of what it is that you're getting. Also, uh, some companies uh, end up sending you hybrids or not quite the right thing, whether you know it or not. Um, so I don't get anything for praising these companies, but Prairie Nursery and Prairie Moon Nursery are two really great native flower companies that you can purchase plants or seeds from or bare roots or corms. Uh, and they send you really good quality stuff, and they really faithfully stick to native plants raised correctly. Uh, so far in my dealings with them, they have not led me wrong. So I'm going to say they won't lead you wrong either. So thank you, Alice Hoffman, for a really great book with great themes and colors to make into a native flower garden. Uh, in the video description... I have all the different numbers and letters of each flower type in this garden, along with their scientific and common names. Uh, so you can make this garden in your very own yard. Plant native, my friends. <laughs>